Dear friends, today uh, we are going to discuss about programmable, programmable logical devices. And this will be basically uh, trying to understand try to understand programmable logic devices. This is the first part of the series of lectures. So in this particular lecture, we'll be interested in uh, understanding the programmable logic uh, devices or uh, uh, very famously known as PLD circuitry. Now, uh, the functions uh, that can be performed uh, by this PLD is uh, actually it's uh, undefined at the time of its uh, manufacturing. So these devices are programmed uh, by the user uh, to perform certain uh, range of functions uh, that is uh, depending upon the logic capacity and other uh, features offered by the device. So uh, let us uh, now uh, look into the digital uh, family tree and this uh, we can see the digital uh, the, actually the family tree of a digital system which has been broadly classified under standard uh, logic that is another is ASICs that is application specific integrated circuits so then we have uh, microprocessors and digital uh, signal processing chips the broader the major digital categories uh, as we have already seen is basically the standard logic ASICs and uh, microprocess and DSP we will just have a very uh, brief look uh, into the uh, different uh, systems that are available under this broad uh, classifications or broad categories uh, if we talk about uh, standard logic devices, the first category uh, which basically refers to the basic functional components like uh, you have uh, logic gates, then we have decoders, multiplexers, so that is uh, combinational circuits, uh, we have sequential circuits, uh, basically sequential circuits includes uh, flip-flops, uh, registers, counters, so, uh, so these are the uh, these are the basic standard logic devices which are categorized under standard logic devices, and uh, this devices uh, have been used uh, uh, well are being used for a very long time. It's uh, it's more than forty five years, and uh, it is very difficult if we use this uh, type of uh, integrated circuits which are basically. Uh, categorized under SSI and uh, that is small scale integration and medium scale integration for very complex designs. So it is always preferred uh, to have uh, integrated circuit which can actually perform more than uh, what we get out of the standard logic devices. The standard logic devices are uh, uh, can be used for a lesser complex circuits or can be used for for a specific functions. Uh, that is, suppose you have a circuit which only requires multiplexing, then we can go for certain circuits, integrated circuits, we have which are specifically uh, inbuilt multi multiplexers. So using that, we can uh, actually accomplish our goal, but but a circuit which is very complex which requires decoders which may require multiplexers which may require different different functions and uh, to fulfill that uh, we will have to use uh, different discrete logic gates or discrete integrated circuits which will make the system complex as well as bulkier uh, so in today's world it is very difficult um, to handle a bulkier a bigger size uh, 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 because size functional boards rather than compared to very handheld um, handheld devices uh, so uh, an obvious uh, drawback here is uh, that the system may literally consist of hundreds of such chips where a complex uh, design is uh, required uh, this in expensive devices can still be useful if the if if uh, the design uh, is not very complex now uh, now if we look into the category which comes under microprocessor and dsp uh, the category is much different uh, approach to the digital uh, system design well uh, this devices actually contain the various types of 
functional blocks um, which with a microcomputer DSP systems uh, devices can be controlled electronically and data can be manipulated by executing program of instructions that has been written into uh, written uh, for the application well uh, this provides a great uh, great uh, deal of flexibility um, uh, which can be achieved using microcomputer and DSP systems because all uh, that we have to do is just to have a program uh, uh, just to have a program which has to be written um, uh, into the microcontroller or the micro uh, microprocessor system. Uh, well, the major downfall of uh, this uh, digital system is the speed. Actually, uh, actually, using a hardware solution for any digital system provides you the faster uh, faster approach compared to uh, a software uh, solution. So. Uh, what we have to do is uh, we can think about something which is uh, specific to the uh, specific to the function so we move on to the next category which is uh, known as uh, the application specific integrated circuits well uh, the four categories that can be discussed uh, under ASIC uh, devices are uh, available to create the digital systems which are uh, as we can see from the diagram, it is the PLDs, which is the programmable logic devices. Then we have uh, gate arrays, and then we have standard cell, and uh, the last one is full custom, which is uh, basically we can we can we can just go for uh, field programmable logic uh, devices. Now, uh, in this uh, part of the lecture, we will be discussing uh, the basics of uh, PLD circuit. So, in order to do that, we will just uh, take a, a very small example uh, how uh, how we can go for uh, uh, programming the device and get the uh, get the uh, get the function out of it, uh, which is uh, which is required by us in any any field or any digital circuit. So uh, let's uh, let's let's find out uh, what's there uh, with a very very simple uh, example. Uh, here we can see uh, the diagram uh, on the right hand side. We have uh, uh, and array. Well, I'm, I'm I'm discussing a PLD circuit where we have uh, actually two variables that are named as A and B. Uh, the complement variables are also available using NOT gates, which is A bar and B bar. Here we can see uh, there is a buffer that has been attached with uh, the A terminal and the B terminal. And here we have inverted um, a buffer, which is uh, providing us with A bar and B bar. And uh, just bottom of it, we can see there are four four AND gates each are of two inputs and which is actually forming an AND array and also uh, generating all the mean terms which are A bar B bar A bar B A B bar and A B and uh, on the extreme right side we can see there are four OR gates which are multiple inputs and those four OR gates or we can say these are the OR array which will which will produce the sum of product terms now uh, if you closely look into the diagram all the inputs of the uh, or o1 are connected to all the mean term lines again the o2 is also connected in the similar fashion o3 is also connected in the similar fashion and also o4 so this is the picture which refers to the initial state of any programmable logic device that means uh, uh, just it has been manufactured and the functions are yet to be defined now if we uh, uh, if we look closely uh, into the circuit we can see the different type of sum of products are possible in this particular circuit so if we have a circuit which requires uh, one set of function or, or, or one set of function that has to be implemented uh, using the discrete logic grades uh, 
uh, there we will find uh, we, we have to use buffers we have to use inverted NOT gates we have to use and and logic gates we have to use multiple OR gates so this will make the particular uh, system a bit bulkier and bit expensive also but but if we have a and array and a OR array in built inside a circuit which can be programmed as per our need then it will provide a, a very good solution um, and will also uh, reduce the space uh, where it uh, where it has to be fixed or it has to be fabricated so so it is always beneficial to have uh, a PLD circuit uh, to uh, to perform the function now let us uh, have a uh, look uh, into what we can do using this PLD circuitry. Here we have an example where O1 output has been used. We'll just uh, take this uh, with another example. Now let's see what we want to do is we want to have a output at O4, O4, and uh, rest of the uh, outputs are not used. That is O1, O2, and O3 are not used so what we will do is we will blow all the fuses fuse that are connected to all the inputs of O1, O2, O3 with the respective mean term uh, lines so after removing after removing all the fuses what we can see is O1, O2 and O3 are disabled now what is our requirement our requirement is that uh, the O4 or has to be used but only these two mean terms so we can see that a bar b is available here and a b is available here so we have to keep these uh, uh, these are the two fuse which are uh, or we have to leave this intact so that uh, the or input is connected to a bar b and as well as the other OR input is connected to AB and other two, the fuse has to be blown. So what happens is the O4 OR gate will have only these two mean terms available at its input. So at the output will be able to uh, get this. Uh, so these are the product terms and we are getting the sum of product a term which is a bar dot b or a b so uh, in this particular diagram we can see uh, that uh, we have a, a simplified pld symbology that is uh, uh, that is uh, here the intact fuse is shown by a cross so here the cross means uh, the fuse are intact and if there is nothing then uh, this shows that the fuse has been blown so the, the the blown fuse is the absence of the cross mark actually now if we look into a dot here on the AND array this means this particular section is hardwired that means this can't be blown this can't be blown during the programming of this particular device so uh, when when there is a provision of any fusible links uh, there it is actually marked using a cross which is evident from this diagram a cross is seen here uh, this means the fuse is intact in this particular line and if it is uh, not there if there is an absence of any cross means the fuse which was initially present here has been blown uh, or has been programmed to blow so uh, so so the absence of the mark means the fuse has been blown so this is the uh, simpli uh, this is the simplified symbology of uh, a pld circuit which will be uh, which will be seen everywhere um, uh, in the circuit uh, or the schematics that are available uh, that are available any manuals or any service manuals now uh, let's uh, let's let's go for another exercise uh, which i leave to you uh, my target audience uh, uh, you can just uh, go for this 
and see whether it can be done or not or you can just see whether this particular circuit is uh, is actually performing uh, performing this functions or not so uh, thank you for watching uh, this particular video which was a, 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 a preliminary video on uh, programmable logic devices. I hope um, the explanation with the help of example was um, uh, uh, was quite informative for you to understand the basics of uh, PLD circuits. So thank you. Uh, thank you very much again for watching this video.